Did you know that Darth Vader had a mead made after him? Well, here it is. Okay, so first of all, look at this wonderful looking red lightsaber colored mead. This is, um, of course, Darth Vader's mead. It's modeled after his lightsaber in his person. And today I'm gonna teach you exactly how I made it and I'm super excited to show you. So let's go ahead and uh, turn on the lights first. All right, so first of all, this mead recipe is as follows. It is about uh, water up to one gallon after you've included these things, two and a half pounds of uh, clover honey, two pounds of raspberries, a third of a gallon of black cherry juice uh, for color and for flavoring. And then I also included buckwheat honey for um, back sweetening and then a teaspoon of Fermade O, which is yeast nutrient, and our yeast. So, I have a couple things here. This is just a, a tube that I normally float a hydrometer in, but it looks like a lightsaber. Um, with the lights off, this looks more well lit, but of course with the lights on, it doesn't work as well. So, we've got our, our main carboy here. It's about half full, because this recipe took a little bit. Um, and we've got our other things. I first want to tell you what this thing tastes like, and then we'll talk about how I made it. Oh yeah, the tartness from the raspberry and this the um, the molassesy taste you get from buckwheat honey, the high floral fruit, excuse me, high floral notes you get from clover honey are there. This thing's really good. So here's how I made this. I started off with my ingredients: my raspberries, my clover honey, my water, my fermade O, and my yeast. I mixed those things up into a um, bucket, basically, to help me ferment. I wanted to start over one gallon, so I would hopefully end up with one gallon. Obviously, sediment has uh, taken its toll. So I mixed in those things. Next thing I did was I let it set for a couple weeks. It needed time to ferment. That fermentation process is essentially the yeast taking hold of the sugars, converting them to alcohol. Once I noticed that the bubbling had slowed down and I had taken a gravity reading, which by the way, I took an original gravity reading in that time when I mixed it together and found out that my starting gravity was, my starting gravity was 1.092. After that primary fermentation, the yeast had eaten all of the sugars and leveled this out to 1.000 at that point. I taste tested it, the raspberries had been pretty well used, they definitely changed colors, but it was a great um, pink color and I liked that quite a bit. Um, it was pretty tart, it needed some sweetness and some, some things. I noticed that it also needed to be a darker shade of red, so I decided to add black cherry juice. Now, this brought it to a different color, of course, and kind of got us closer to that ultimate lightsaber-esque world. And uh, at this point, it, it had that bright raspberry, the cherry had contrasted well with the raspberry taste, there was some honey character, but it was young, it needed time. Then, I set it back for a while and kind of forgot about it, just to let it age, just to let it kind of mellow out for that yeastiness to lose its uh, power, so to speak, and yeah. I came back to it. It needed to be stabilized with a, a multitude of options, but I chose to stabilize it with potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite, which are two stabilizers for home brewing that halt yeast fermentation from occurring, essentially. Um, there are other options like pasteurizing, where you heat up the mead, you can uh, cold crash, where you um, basically freeze out the yeast to where they stop fermenting for the moment. Um, those are some other ones. Time is one, but it takes forever. So I stabilized it because I wanted to back sweeten safely. The yeast could still eat the sugars if I had just pitched in more honey. At that point, I wanted to add buckwheat honey. I did kind of a side-by-side -side taste test to figure out which one is gonna be better, the clover honey or the uh, buckwheat. Buckwheat is darker. Um, raspberry is tart, and when I think of uh, you know, Darth Vader, he's kind of a tart human being, and he also is a little dark. So that buckwheat character really pronounced the bright, or excuse me, the darkness of Darth Vader. Um, I did that, I back sweetened it, I brought it up to 1.010 gravity, which means that it 
uh, it was a little sweeter. It tasted really nice. It still needed more time, but it tasted great. Uh, and I set it away again. At this point, because we had stabilized it, there should have been no fermentation. There was no fermentation, thankfully. And um, I let it set for even longer. It's been quite some time since I started this, but here we are with the mead. I think this thing really encapsulates um, Darth Vader's character. It's got this, this uh, big body uh, darkness and contrasting brightness from raspberry. The cherry, which is uh, uh, delicate, is still there. The buckwheat is what really brings the darkness down for us. But the clover honey, which has its bright notes to it, is really nice as well. Yeah, this thing, I think it's great. The way I am lighting this, I have a, a big light for this one because I needed to, that, making it to the lightsaber color. Um, and then I also am using these little drink lights, which I found on Amazon and essentially just drop them in. You pull this tab and you drop it in and it lights up a drink. Are they super strong uh, lighting? Not really. And it's honestly making this one look a little brown and it's not brown, it's red. It's, this is very clearly lighting up with a nice white light. It is supposed to be like a lightsaber. So if you don't, here's the example. If I take the light off of this mead, here's what this looks like. Without the light, this mead's just really dark. And that's kind of how it's supposed to be. I've noticed in my process of making this that the lighter the red and the more light you have, it just makes it pink. So I needed a dark red in order to pronounce the lightsaber. So turning it back on, ba -ba -bum, there we have it. And I believe that this mead um, is super simple to make. It's been setting for a while. I will say that I started this mead about five months ago and I've just been real lazy with it. You could churn this thing out in two months, um, but I got real lazy with other things going on back behind me. A couple important notes. The, uh, my goal was to avoid using any um, food dye or anything like that. So that's why I chose raspberries, which gave a pink color and dark uh, or black cherry juice, excuse me. Um, and I think it did pretty well. Is this like a perfect lightsaber color red? No, but I'm pretty sure it, it got close. And I would love to see other people um, do this because I think it's fun. I've made two other of these. I've made a Mace Windu, which is a purple lightsaber mead. And then of course I've made a Yoda mead, cause why not? That one's green and you can check those out. It's a green apple. And then the other one is a blueberry and cinnamon. This is raspberry and cherry and buckwheat honey. Again, I challenge you to make this. I challenge you to attempt it with my recipe or a variation of it because it's a very good mead. Um, my next step for this will be to actually take and bottle it, which if you wanna know about bottling, you can look that up. Essentially, you just put them into bottles carefully and cap them or cork them and let it set. So I wanted to leave it like this for this video. Again, this has been a whole lot of fun. If you wanna know exactly how it was made, kinda of go back to the beginning of this video. Basically, you mix your stuff together, you add anything else in that secondary stage that you want to. In my case, it was cherry juice and buckwheat honey. Um, I made sure to stabilize so I could keep it sweet. And here we are. Mead making is a lot of fun because of this community and because of um, your involvement. So if you have a question or a comment, make sure and leave it below because I'd love to hear from you guys. The good things, the bad things, um, it's all about building the, com the community in a uh, positive way or even just a critical way. Let's be, let's uh, help each other grow. So thank you for watching. This has been Darth Vader's Mead and I will of course be back with some more content. I'm working on one final one of these and that is Obi-Wan Kenobi's. It's turning out to be a bigger challenge than I thought, but that's okay. So I will catch you guys in the future with another video. And on that note, cheers. Mm -hmm.